up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of PSR. Today, we have two very special rifles with us. These are the Orca designed by Hoffman Tactical. And we're going to be looking at these rifles today and uh, seeing how they stack up. Should be a lot of fun. Excuse me? Who are you? I'm PSR. No, you're uh, not PSR. I'm PSR. I'm here filming. Where did you get I, that mask from? Where did you get that mask from? eBay. It's $5. eBay? How did you even get here, dude? That's a good question. I don't know. I'm just here with the camera filming. I demand you take okay. off that mask. It's, it's time you guys finally knew the truth. I'm not PSR. We are different people. Hoffman Tactical? No way! I am your biggest fan. The same. I, I, I can't believe it. We have Hoffman Tactical here on the channel. This is unprecedented. Until today. We, we, we... I'm honestly speechless, bro. I gotta collect myself, because I'm like fangirling right now, really heavy. Let's, uh, like, I- I think I we should jump into the video at this point and move forward. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of PSR. Today, we are with the one and only Hoffman Tactical, and we've got these insane, totally not printed AR-15s right here, right? These are not printed. No, nope. right? no, no, they, they would never be 3D printed. Um, and they're called the Orca, and we're gonna do some testing of them. But first, I've gotta thank KAK Industry for being the channel sponsor for PSR. KAK makes a boatload of AR parts. They are cranking out a lot of them, and they are high quality yet affordable parts for your ARs. We're talking everything from 5.56 to 308 to a bunch of different calibers like 9x39. They make Remington 700 parts as well. If you haven't found what you're looking for there, I don't know what you're doing because they got everything. I would never, ever, ever use the code PSR at checkout for 10% off. That's something I would just never recommend, right? You just don't do that. Don't use PSR for 10% off your entire order at KAK Industry. And with that said, thanks again to KAK for sponsoring this channel. Let's get to uh, talking about these rifles, okay? Let's do it. Tim, tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your background. Yeah, so I uh, design um, firearms, and um, the ones that are definitely not made you know, at home, and I, uh, that's basically what I do. I have a YouTube channel. I do a lot of uh, 3D printing content, stuff like that. I need you to go down right now into the description, or after you're watching this video, go down in the description. I will link his YouTube channel. It is an absolute must subscribe. I would very much appreciate it. Yes, do that right now. That's a demand. That is a threat. No, it's not a threat for YouTube, but it's a hard suggestion, okay? All right, so I must say, this is one of the most beautiful and strange yet aquatic looking firearms I have ever seen in my life. I think it's beautiful. Let us know what you guys think of this in the comments, but I love it. Tell us a little bit about this project. Yeah, so the orca obviously is the name, so it's a very aquatic name, uh, the killer whale, so I thought that was appropriate. This project started off earlier last year with my goal of an AR-15 upper receiver. I just wanted to do it just because, no particular reason. That's how it started, and then after a little bit of experimentation with different uh, designs, I uh, decided that I wanted to do something super streamlined. And, uh, like, and something different. So if, I'm, if you're gonna be printing it, it should have something unique about it. I started off with the stock, which I'd already designed. It's the Gen 2 stock. It goes on a standard AR buffer tube. That's kind of, I already had that. I kind of went from there with the aesthetics, worked on it over about six months until I got the, uh, the final version here. So basically I am printing all of the parts that can be printed relatively easily and practically. You could expand this a little bit more into some of the smaller parts, but uh, I did it and that could always be done by somebody else. So. Tell us just a little bit aesthetically, like what made you choose this? Because I think that's the most striking thing about this when we just first see it uh, in person. When I first saw it, I just was speechless because I've never seen anything like this. So what was your design aesthetically, like your design inspiration for this project? I didn't really have one actually, to be honest. Um, it de definitely was not uh, the XM8 or any of those other horrible bulltop guns, to be honest. I hadn't even heard of those at that point. Um, but uh, I think it started with ergonomics was a big thing. I wanted to have really good ergonomics. And then I wanted to, obviously I needed to have it strong enough. So I, certain areas like up here, we added a lot of extra material here. We don't need that back here. So I just kind of blended it all together. And I basically experimented with a lot of different shapes for the upper receiver until I got something that I thought was strong, well blended, smooth with no snag points. And then I just kind of took it from there. Uh, with the, the lower and the handguard and the pistol grip and of course the stock all focusing on just going for that integrated look 
not the bolted together uh, AK look, but uh, just kind of integrated all one piece was kind of the idea and it just kind of organically started and it grew from there. It's incredible because it, I mean, that's what it really looks like. It, it looks like an organic design, whereas a lot of guns, they look very machined, you know, industrial looking with the metal and stuff. This looks like it, it could be a living object. Like it, it, it's, it's a living thing almost. Yeah, hence the name the Orca. Um, yes. Yeah, that, that's the idea here. It was just kind of, since we are using a new technology to make this, most firearms designs are dictated by the manufacturing process, which is a subtractive machining process. When we're putting this thing on using additive manufacturing, we're not limited by those restrictions um, to do this with other processes, which simply be outrageously expensive and time consuming. So because of that, there's no reason for me to stick with traditional aesthetics or traditional design techniques when I don't have to. Uh, 3D printing has its own limits and um, designing within those limits was, was definitely a big part of the goal. Indeed. So I know that you've incorporated hose clamps in here and that's kind of like a staple of your design it philosophy. It is, yeah. So on my lower receivers, I use hose clamps to reinforce the buffer tower and um, you can check out other videos on, on how that works. But on the Orca here, the stock attaches to the lower and the handguard attaches to the upper via these tapered clips, uh, carbon fiber nylon clips. And uh, the hose clamps actually hold those clips in. It's the best solution I've had found so far. I have done quite extensive research and other solutions. The ordinary garden variety hose clamp is actually the best solution. And um, we've actually never had one fail ever by anyone. I've never seen it happen. So embrace the hose clamps to be left behind. Yes. Embrace the hose clamps. I'm team hose clamp as well. And I see you've got these kind of soft hose clamp covers so you don't yes. get injured there, on those. There is a little sharp screw on the hose clamps, which is their one and only downside. And we've covered that up with a, a TPU, also 3D um, hose clamp cover that just keeps them from snagging on your fingers and scratching anything. Were you the very first to 3D print an entire functioning um, like upper and lower for an AR? No. No? Um, there is a project that came before this, a pretty cool project, the Biden's Bane. So the Biden's Bane is, I believe, the first 3D uh, AR-15 upper I saw. It is a different design technique. You can check that out. Also, I think Invader Zip with the R2.0. I don't know what that time period was, but he did release that one first. So that's another one out there. So at this point, we have at least three options for 3D AR-15 uppers. So it's 2023 and now you can 3D print an entire AR-15 yes. uh, using 3D printing. So tell us what is not printed on it. Yeah, so what's not printed on this guy right here is obviously the barrel, um, the bolt carrier group. Those are kind of the key components, um, both by KAK Industries. Nice little KAK action there. Lower parts gets as well. Nice. Um, so yeah, the barrel, bolt carrier group, the uh, buffer mass and the spring, the gas system, which obviously is the gas block and the gas tube, and then the small lower parts, like the hammer, trigger, selector, and then um, the charging handle, those parts aren't. Gotcha, okay, so tell us a little bit about the materials used for this one and that one. Yeah, so the internally, you can't see this, but the barrel mount in both of these guys is a clamshell design. Um, it supports the barrel and it is made from a carbon fiber filled nylon, which is a, has very good temperature resistance. That supports the barrel, that's subject to the most, the, the majority of the heat. That part acts to insulate and uh, protect the rest of it from the heat. This guy here, other than that, um, is all PLA plus except for the carbon fiber nylon clips. Wow. Uh, which, which hold the parts together. And the PLA Plus actually runs really good. It's plenty strong, probably the strongest, most durable option available. It just doesn't have the heat resistance. Mm. Um, so that limits how many magazines you can put through it before you start really softening up. Ah, I see. And then what is this? Is Polymaker? This is all Polymaker uh, PLA Pro, which I would highly recommend. Shouts out to Polymaker. If you're interested in the filament used for this, it's in the description of my video. And um, Polymaker makes some great stuff. Yeah. Tell us about the filament there. This one here, Internally, it's the same, um, but the difference is externally, instead of being the uh, PLA Pro, I am using the Polymaker PA6 carbon fiber, which has been annealed. And okay. um, that, this entire rifle here is annealed Polymaker PA6 carbon fiber. And if you're not familiar, annealed means that the, car the parts are just like baked after, Yeah, right? they're baked and that uh, basically it changes it from a semi-crystalline to, uh, to a crystalline polymer and that uh, really improves the creep properties. It helps reduce creep, which is when pins shift around and they shouldn't. So it's all around just a good thing. Material on this is going to be much more heat resistant. Much, than much more. This guy here, it holds up to more ammo than you would normally shoot through a conventional AR. So and, it's, you've, and how many rounds do you have through that one? This guy has about 600 and this guy has around 1,000 wow, um, nice. right now on it. Awesome. Now, lastly, uh, can you put this on like a normal 3D printer like that doesn't have anything special on it or? Yes, actually, as long as you can print the, the PLA plus and you can either buy the barrel mounts or you can 
carbon fiber nylon, um, you 100% can put this on, uh, even in like an Ender 3, just get the orientation right so you can actually fit it on there. Nice. Uh, but this was printed on the uh, Prusa MK3 i3 printer, and this was printed on the Bamboo Lab P1P. So. Amazing, amazing. And you would never be able to go uh, to Tim's website, which I can't list in the description, and get parts for these to complete them. Yeah, I mean, Google is definitely not your friend here. Yeah, yeah, never Google Hoffman Tactical. So with that said, we did unload a lot of information on you, and I, I, I get that, but I think it's time to just shoot these things. I think it really is. Let's, let's blast them around downrange. Let's do it. All right, so here we are. We've got our Orca. This is the CF nylon one? Yes, carbon fiber okay. nylon. That one has got a little bit of a heavier barrel on it. It's that KAK value line, right? Yes. And then we got a Nova Light muzzle device on there. Nova Light muzzle brake on there. Yeah, a little yeah. blasty, but it does, does definitely does reduce uh, recoil. recoil. Awesome. All right, well, uh, let's. I say you just give her and uh, put a mag through it. Thanks. I, ca I cannot wait. All right, you go put a mag through it. No problems there. And that's actually, yeah, landing hit, it's held zero just fine. That's pretty promising. It's, uh, I'm glad it didn't shift. Uh, it, yeah, and, and it didn't explode. No, no explosions either. <laughs> My hands, Shocking. five fingers, five fingers. Intact. This is public release now. Uh, so we are going to see how it feels. Awesome. All right, here we go with the orca. Oh, I feel like we should put some orca sounds in here when we fire it. Oh, baby, all right. Safety off. Oh man, I love this micro prism. Woo, yes. Oh my god. Oh, that's a light. Hello. Woo. All right, I say I just dump it. Oh my gosh. Well, Mr. Hoffman Tactical, I think this is, a, this is a winner. Holy shit. That is awesome. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's not the lightest. The other one's lighter, which we're gonna shoot after this, but it, it feels, just, does feel really good in your hand. It feels part great, of and the stock, the uh, length of pull for the stock is perfect. Uh, the optic really works well on this one. Oh man, this thing's awesome. All right, so the next one we're gonna shoot is the PLA version. Now, I, when I picked it up, I noticed it was super light. Uh, how did you achieve that lightness and how much does it weigh? Yeah, so this guy weighs somewhere between four and five pounds. Okay. Um, the lightest one I've done is right at four pounds. Um, <sighs> That's insane. Yeah, it's the 3D parts, you can adjust infill and stuff. You do lose durability, but um, when you adjust the infill appropriately, you can really shave the weight off. This one here is higher infill. It's not as high as it could be, but it's higher. And then the other key here to being lightweight is that it does use a pencil barrel from Fax and Firearms and the Fax and Firearms lightweight bull carrier group, gotcha. as well as an empty buffer and just trying to shave weight in all the components where I could. That's incredible, man. That feels super, super light. You already have a thousand rounds through it. So yes. it's, it's doing fine in, in terms of durability. Yeah, this has got a thousand rounds through it. We have, there are signs definitely of the PLA softening okay. uh, due to the massive, massive rounds. But while that does cause accuracy shifting, reliability has never been an issue. Nice. Now um, you have a little special little uh, something inside the lower of that though. Yeah, tell me about that. We have a super safety in there. It's a push button safety that also acts as a uh, active reset trigger. So I can select spring reset and active reset at will by clicking it um, side to side. So uh, that should be fun. Nice, so it's it's all about safety here. It's, it's mm -hmm. the super safety because we want it to be super safe and that's exactly what it is. And it really is. It really does um, help prevent any miss accidental fires and any of that stuff. So yes, yes. It's awesome stuff. Great, all right. Uh, yeah, go ahead, let's, let's do it. Okay. I say that worked. <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> that that did work, and that was very safe. Uh, can I try it? Yes, uh, and, absolutely. And, and we can and we can do that again. Yeah, we can do it again. That's sixty rounds. It shouldn't affect cause any negative effects or anything. S sixty should be okay to go at that speed with, oh, the, yeah. with the super safe mode. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And this is in super safe mode right now. Yep. Okay. All right. Oh, here we go, guys. <laughs> Whoo! Okay, let's give her, bud. Oh, shit. 
Here we go. <laughs> I don't think you finished. Oh, wait, I didn't. Boom. Holy smokes. That is a lot of fun. And it's still not too hot. It is a pretty warm day, so this is doing pretty awesome. Wow. We have six bad guys down there on to their great disadvantage they're all equipped with firebird targets we have an orca right here and we're gonna uh, dislodge those firebird targets from their chests and i'll drop our mag We have three more firebirds left downrange, and uh, these guys are a bit further away. I think it would be appropriate to use a more accurate orca with a 3x optic on top. We're going to try to play, do some more precision shot placement and uh, take out these last three uh, tangos down here. All right, that wasn't so bad. And uh, the area is now secure, bad guys all gone. We are at 300 yards. We have two silhouette-ish sized targets down there and I have the carbon fiber nylon orca and we're gonna see if we can actually land any hits at this distance. We also have some reactive targets on this steel and um, that should make it a little bit more spicy and fun. Ready? Ready. All right. Whoa, first hit. All right, so I don't know if I'm gonna get it first try like Mr. Uh, Expert Sniper over here at Hoffman Tactical, but I'm gonna to try to do the same thing. We have another Firebird reactive target on the uh, torso size. A little bit smaller target, but uh, we're gonna to try to do this, so let's do it. Did you aim high at all? Dead on. Dead on, oh my gosh. You should aim a little bit high maybe, but I went dead on. Here we go. First shot, and it didn't look like all of them though. It must have been all of them. That was really good. First shot, point and Yes, click. dude. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so that worked. Um, thumbs up for the uh, reactive targets. That is a blast, quite literally, and the smoke and the flash is insane. Woo, there we go. Okay. There's more Firebird there. Holy shit. I thought they didn't go, all go off. If anyone doubts if this is accurate uh, at 300 yards, it is absolutely accurate. And um, that is an incredible feat because this is all plastic. Plastic, it's fantastic. All right, so after a full day of shooting these amazing plastic rifles that resemble marine wildlife, we have had an awesome time, and I want to thank you, Tim, for coming out. I very Shoot. much appreciate you having me over. A huge blast shooting these things out here with you. It's been a dream of mine ever since I started watching his videos to uh, collab with Tim, and we finally made it happen, and hopefully this won't be the last collab we do. Hopefully. Um, tell people where they can find you on social media and stuff. Yeah, so Hoffman Tactical, um, I'm most platforms, so you can find me on Instagram, here on YouTube, uh, Twitter, um, as well as an account on the Odd Sea. And then yeah. um, the Odd Sea. What's that? I yeah. would never go to the Odd Sea. Strange place. I have no idea. But uh, Google is definitely not your friend, and uh, definitely don't type in Hoffman Tactical um, into that not your friend uh, search engine. I want to thank all of you for watching another episode of PSR, aka Shoot Repeat. Until next time, PSR and Hoffman Tactical out. Goodbye.
here. I'll just do it. I, I do this a lot. But first, first, <laughs> I did the same. It's horrible. <laughs> I, I'm really, really bad about this. That'll make the outtakes. Uh, but first.